Hello everyone, my name is Bill Trong, and I'm currently a master's student under the supervision of Tammy Pregmania and Kartik Agarwal. The project that I've been working on involves braiding Floquet Majorana modes in one-dimensional topological superconductors. So as an introduction, we know that Majorana edge modes uh, live in the Gataev chain or can live in the Gataev chain. And the braiding of these zero edge modes is an important topic uh, in the field of topological quantum computation. Unfortunately, uh, these zero modes, they hybridize with proximity, which makes braiding in one dimension impossible. It would be really nice if we had an extra degree of freedom to sort of play around with that we could use to facilitate a braiding protocol. So enter Floquet, otherwise known as periodically driven quantum systems. Certain Floquet systems can host so-called Majorana pi edge modes, and it's precisely these pi edge modes that can provide the auxiliary degree of freedoms that we're looking for. So to elaborate on what we mean, uh, here in this schematic, we have essentially what is the braiding protocol, and time is downwards. So the strip in the middle is where the Majoranas can change flavor. So where zero Majoranas can change into pi and back. And so they can change into zeros and pi's when necessary. And at the very end of this protocol, the zero Majoranas, they swap their positions. So an exchange is performed. This braiding protocol in particular was developed for a clean, non-interacting system in the Kataev chain by Bauer and co-workers. Tammy was among one of them. And my project uh, basically examines the robustness of this protocol in the presence of disorder as well as interactions. With the interactions in particular, we expect the Majorana uh, zero edge modes to be less localized than in the clean case. So as an additional motivation or as an additional inspiration, we think that perhaps maybe by localization, if we include a bunch of disorder into our system at the same time, it might help to localize the edge modes. Um, the paper by Yao and co-workers shown here serves as an inspiration. So now onto the model. The Hamiltonian that we use is divided into two parts. So in the first half cycle, we have uh, our Hamiltonian being represented in terms of Majoranas in the Gataev chain. Here, the off-site couplings are turned on, while in the second half cycle, the on-site couplings between the Majoranas are turned on instead. Another way to frame this is to say that the Hamiltonian alternates in time between the topological phase and the non-topological phase of the Gataev chain. Now, since we're talking about Floquet, it's important to introduce some of the machinery that goes into it. So UF is the Floquet operator, which is the time evolution operator after one period. And 5T is what we call a Floquet state, and it's time periodic. The action of the Floquet operator on the Floquet state, so right there, um, leaves the Floquet state with an additional phase, and this epsilon is what we call the quasi-energy. So this, uh, this uh, model that we have, this binary model, has an associated phase diagram. To put names on the couplings, we say that lambda zero represents the couplings between uh, off-site Majoranas, and lambda one represents the couplings on on-site Majoranas. And from that, we can put together a phase diagram which has four phases. The trivial phase has no edge modes. MZM right there refers to Majorana zero edge modes. MPM refers to Majorana pi edge, edge modes. MZM and MPM have both. And in the braiding protocol, we circulate um, between all four phases. So before we talk about the braiding protocol, let's talk about the ingredients that go into it first. So we want to have a way to move the Majoranas across the Kataev chain. So as an example, let's just have um, the Kataev chain with two edge uh, Majoranas, zero Majoranas. Numerically, what we do is we change our system parameters very slowly so that it approaches the adiabatic limit. Um, and we try to get that Majorana, for example, to say, uh, be in the middle of the chain. In doing so, we induce two phases in our Kataev chain, in our chain the Majorana zero, uh, zero mode phase and also the trivial phase. The parameters that we have control over here is our lambda zero and lambda one, so again, we change them very slowly, site by site. The other ingredient that we need to talk about uh, before we talk about the brain protocol proper is how do we take advantage of the uh, pi modes? What do we do with them? So we take the pi modes and we couple them to the zero Majorana when it's necessary to, to do so. This uh, facilitates the changing of flavor, so to speak. To see what's under the hood, or what happens under the hood, let's take a look at the uh, single particle quasi-energy spectrum. And in this particular example spectrum, we have zero modes and pi modes. Here are bulk modes, they're just shown for visualization purposes. 
What we do is we insert a perturbation every two periods. And what that does is that halves um, the quasi-energy spectrum and it forces these pi modes to fold to zero energy. When that happens, uh, pi's and zeros that are nearby to each other and are also within the uh, region where the perturbation is effective, they're susceptible to mixing, or rather they're susceptible to being coupled. So that's our way of coupling the Majoranas of different flavors together. For, so now after talking about the ingredients that go into the brain protocol, let's talk about what the brain protocol is all about. So the two plots shown, left and right, show the left and right Majoranas. Time is going up on the vertical axis, and we can think of the horizontal axis as the position on the Kitaev chain that we're looking at. Um, the densities that are popping out towards you, those are the uh, Majorana wave functions. The strip down the middle here is the effective region that the perturbation is being applied. So we start off with the edge modes at the, uh, the zero edge modes at the end. Then we move the uh, edge mode on the right towards the middle. We create two pi edge modes in the middle and one of them ends up coupling to the zero. We move the pi mode in the middle towards the left. The zero mode on the left moves towards the middle and it moves past that coupled pair uh, with no issues because they're separated in the quasi-energy spectrum, so they don't hybridize. We take the pi, we move it back towards the middle, destroy the pi's, and then we move the zero in the middle to the left. So that basically completes the braiding protocol. And uh, there are ways to quantify how good or how bad the exchange is. The simplest way is to take the final Majorana edge states and to compare them to the initial edge states and see how much they differ. So that was for a clean, non-interacting system. Let's go ahead and add disorder. What do we add disorder to? Um, it makes sense naturally to add disorder to the chemical potential, which in our system is represented by lambda one. So after say 1000 disorder realizations, uh, we end up with these plots. So we see that the, pro that the brain protocol still works, albeit the amount of error between the final and initial Majorana states are, are actually a little bit more significant now. If we ramp up the amount of disorder that we have, let's say twice as much or three times as much, then the brain protocol breaks completely. So uh, we can see that as halfway through the protocol, everything sort of breaks down and the Majorana wave functions get washed out and they go into the bulk. So now that's the story with disorder. What happens with interactions? And what kind of interactions are we going to include? We include short range homogeneous interactions between Majoranas and the corresponding terms are shown on the far right. We want these interactions to appear throughout the entire protocol. And so we include them in the Floquet operator as follows. In the first half cycle and in the second half cycle. Now, because we're dealing with interactions, we of course have to work in a many-body framework, which means the basis that we have is a basis of product states. That complicates things a little bit. Um, we don't have the luxury of taking a look at the single particle uh, Majoran wave functions anymore. So, but there are some other challenges that come up, like for example, we're limited in our chain size, we use exact diagonalization, so there's a bit of time that that takes. There's also some interesting things, things that come about when we have to construct the initial Majoranas and time evolve them throughout the protocol, and there are ways that we've figured out to determine how to track the Majoranas themselves. But those are things that we can talk about after the talk. Um, so now what happens when we include interactions into our system? Uh, everything breaks down. So um, here is what we have with just a little bit of interactions, uh, v is equal to 0.1. Um, we see that as the right Majorana moves towards the middle, right there, uh, everything gets washed out thereafter. And we think this might be happening, uh, the reason why we think this might be happening is, um, is that the Majoranas in the interacting case are less localized, very much so. And so when the right Majorana is making its way towards the middle, it begins to see its left counterpart, and they begin to hybridize, mix very violently, and then that just destroys the rest of the protocol completely. So just to wrap up, in conclusion, uh, for the clean, non-interacting case, the protocol works, as demonstrated by Bauer and co-workers. With weak disorder, it still works to some degree, uh, with, with some error. If the disorder is ramped up so that it's much stronger, everything breaks down. For a clean, interacting setting, everything breaks down. So what happens if we include both at the same time? Weak, strong disorder with an interacting system. We don't know. So this is currently a work in progress. We're sort of hopefully expecting that many body localization will be our saving grace. But uh, I ask that you stay tuned. And with that, I'd like to end my uh, talk. Thank you very much.